Okay, yo, what's up, guys? The Insane Game Freak here, here to talk about this Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. No, actually, no, oh, I'm, I'm stupid. Tomb Raider, was it the Rise of Tomb Raider situation and the rage behind it and the whole, which for some reason has also kind of brought up the Bayonetta 2 stuff again. Not really brought it up like, oh, we're going to start complaining about it again, but people are relating this situation with Microsoft and Tomb Raider with Nintendo and Bayonetta. Which a lot of people have already admitted is not the same thing, but I don't feel like people have realized it is not the same fucking thing. Now, this is going to be addressing a few points. You have a lot of people, and I'm going to probably address more Angry Joe, particularly because it's his video that really kind of annoyed me. After seeing that shit, I was just kind of like, you have got to be out of your fucking mind. So, pretty much, it was announced, what well, was it, okay. First, it was announced that, you know, the, the next Tomb Raider game, the Rise of Tomb Raider, is going to be Xbox One exclusive. And then later, like today, it was announced that it's going to be a timed exclusive and it's also coming to 360. And Joe originally made the video when we had just heard the news about it being Xbox One exclusive and it turned into this whole Microsoft's taking the game away from the gamers who bought it on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 and, uh, well, technically they haven't bought it. Well, yeah, no, they bought it, yeah. PlayStation 4 and pretty much everybody else who aren't Microsoft gamers... Pretty much everyone else loses the ability of playing that game, at least for a while. Even when it comes out, you're going to lose the ability of playing that game for a while. And that's not fair. What I don't understand is, is that Microsoft's been doing that since the 360 era. I mean, there were a whole bunch of fucking... The, the, the ones that come to mind off the bat was like Mass Effect and Ninja Gaiden. And there's a fuck ton more I'm, I'm not really mentioning. But there were just... There were games on the 360 that had that same motherfucking problem. Where... All they were doing is, man, they were either timed exclusives and you couldn't get them anywhere else. But no one bitched at Microsoft then. And even, I, but when I heard that shit, that's what pissed me off. Because I was like, they're not even exclusive exclusives. Like, they're not going to stay exclusive. Because almost none of those games stayed exclusive. I think, like, the majority of those games ended up on PS3 later anyway. And the irony of it all is, is on top of that, even if you take Tomb Raider into account... Tomb Raider sold more on Sony platforms than they did Microsoft platforms. So they threw a whole bunch of money at them. And I don't know why people were surprised at this move. Microsoft has been throwing money around for their fucking game consoles. I don't know too much about the Xbox era, but I know for the 360 era, they threw a fuck ton of money at developers. That's why when you got to the later years of the Xbox, all you were fucking getting were multiplats because you couldn't, because they weren't making their own games. They didn't have their own IPs and they had lost all the exclusive third-party games they had at that point because because fucking Sony had all those fucking games. So you were just kind of sitting there going, oh, oh, man, what the fuck am I going to play? Oh, I guess I'll play the GTA V because it's not like there's any other fucking first-party Microsoft game coming out. But people are bitching about this whole situation, and you do understand the point of an exclusive, right? You understand the reason why we have exclusives is for the sake of of giving you a reason to buy a specific console. This is, and then what makes it, but you know what hurts this even more is now that we know it's a timed exclusive, it just kind of makes me go, what the fuck was the point of even making an exclusive in the first place? Like, like Microsoft, you did this shit during the 360 era and that didn't really work out for you. And you, you're you thinking, oh, well, it don't work the same way it did then. No, you had the head start of a year from the 360, the PS3 fucking up, that also helped you out. And you guys were only still second place to the fucking Wii at that point. You can't do that. You have so much negative press and shit that there is no way you didn't think this was going to have some level of backlash to you. Granted, it's the whole logic of people are going to bitch about it, but people will still go buy the game. Get out of their fucking way. And what makes me mad and what the Angry Joe situation is like, you got mad at this, but you were an Xbox 360 owner and you didn't even fucking complain about this. When Sony wasn't getting all these third-party games. Because most of them were timed exclusives. Like, they were only on 360 for, like, a little while. And then, like, within months or maybe a few years, they got jumped to the PS3 anyway. Oh, but that's fucking okay. But it's not okay when it happens in the reverse situation where Microsoft gets the fucking exclusive. That what makes me mad specifically with Microsoft with the situation is, Microsoft, you don't have that many IPs. 
like like IPs that are yours and no one can come over there and take that shit from you. And some of them you don't even use the ones you do have. Namely the rare IPs. Ha, uh, see what I did there? <laughs> rare because it's the company and rare because we haven't seen a fucking game actually featuring most of these characters. It's the same kind of bullshit. I mean, the, the, you just now are making a Killer Instinct game. The fuck? Conker's pretty much DLC for Project Spark and Banjo-Kazooie is dead. Let's, let's just be honest here. And what bugs me is that, like, listen, if you're going to take a third-party game and make it exclusive, keep it motherfucking exclusive. Because I think people have said this already. The reason why having a third-party exclusive and keeping it exclusive is important is because when people are still thinking about buying your console down the road, like, you got to think about it. The Xbox One and the PS4 will probably be around at least four or five years. Usually, and I mean, this is my mindset with the PS3. When I bought the PS3 in 2010, even though the game, the console came out six, uh, not six, uh, four years earlier, it was because I had pretty much waited four years for games to stack on each other. All the exclusives I can only get on the Sony platform. So by the time it hit 2010, I had a fuck ton of games I could have go and buy as soon as I got the fucking console. Xbox, uh, let's think about it. Dead Rising, P going to PC. Rise, PC. Titanfall is already on fucking PC. The only two games I can think right now that you have that aren't going to PC and that are still somewhat exclusive would be um, Sunset Overdrive, which comes out in October, and fucking Forza. And technically there's two Forza games, which I don't understand why you would double up on Forza, but whatever. Whoever likes Forza, that's cool for you. The point is, you don't keep any of this shit exclusive, so they never, you, Microsoft, you never give your console time to stack games. The same thing happened with the 360. It was like, oh, the 360 has all these third-party exclusives. And then you kept pulling games out of the list because the time ran out. So the shit just kept dropping. And what makes me even matter is that people relate this to the Bayonetta 2 situation. Like Nintendo fucking did this mean-ass travesty. And what pisses me the fuck off about the goddamn uh, Bayonetta 2 situation, first off, it's not the same thing. Because... Tomb Raider was going to get made regardless. That shit was already announced before the whole Xbox One exclusivity thing was even mentioned. That game was going to get made. But the difference is, Bayonetta 2 was not going... Bayonetta 2 wasn't even in fucking development. Bayonetta 2 was just kind of dead. Like, dead ass. Bayonetta 2 was dead. And then all of a sudden, Nintendo was like, you know what, fuck it. We'll give you a whole bunch of money um, to make Bayonetta 2. It just has to be exclusive to our console. Please pour Bayonetta 1, which they did for fucking free. Well, for free for us when we buy it. And then, oh, can you make a new IP for us? Wonderful 101. Don't fucking act like we... Don't act like, oh, oh, Nintendo was, was just as crazy as Microsoft. No, we didn't throw money at them to steal it away from you for a, little bit, a limited amount of time. We fucking made it. We made the game, technically. That's how Nintendo did it. They made the fucking game for all intents and purposes. They paid them to make the game. The game wouldn't have been made. And what makes me mad is that people want to hold that against Wii U owners. But, hey, guess what just got announced, guys? The fucking, uh, what was it? The Resident Evil, uh, what was it? Resident Evil 4 HD re-release? Re you know, the one that was exclusive to the GameCube? Guess all the consoles that are getting it. Guess which console isn't getting the fucking remake of the game that was originally exclusive to the GameCube? The next fucking Nintendo console. The Wii U isn't getting this fucking game. And what makes me mad is that it, that's happened a lot. We didn't get a lot of fucking Resident Evil or even Metal Gear games. And you were just... Well, Grand Metal Gear has kind of been like a Sony, unofficial Sony exclusive. Even Kingdom Hearts, it's like, hey, look. We've been holding down Kingdom Hearts on the handheld since the fucking GBA. Where the fuck is our love in terms of at least the HD remixes? Oh, look. It's the same bullshit, but no one wants to fucking talk to us and go, someone wants to say some shit for us, but oh, fuck, we get banned out of two. The one fucking game we can honestly be proud of, that and Devil's Third, and people look at us like we're fucking stupid, like we did something wrong. I don't understand that shit, and what pisses me, it's, it's, it's weird for Microsoft even more, because it's like, dude, Microsoft's been doing this since the 360 era, so it's like, so let me get this straight, they've been doing this since the 360, but now it's a problem. Huh? And then all, and then the whole Bayonetta 2 situation. 
Oh, Nintendo doesn't get any third party games. And then we get third party exclusives and people get mad and bitchy about it. The fuck is wrong with you? The fuck is wrong with you? I don't understand. <laughs> I never understood that. And it's like exclusives are important to make you buy a specific console anyway. Microsoft, if you would just keep shit exclusive, I wouldn't even I don't even have a problem with it being my, uh, Xbox One exclusive because it would just give me another reason to buy an Xbox One. You kind of, they've been doing relatively well in terms of game variety and things I'm interested in. You know, the problem is they can't keep a fucking game long enough for me to give a shit. It's like I was interested in Dead Rising 3. PC! I was interested, well, I wasn't interested in Rise, but you know, that's how I was interested in Rise. PC! I'm just like, just keep a fucking game! Keep a game for more than a year! God damn it! And what makes it worse? And Sony gets all these fucking exclusive games that aren't necessarily, uh, that aren't necessarily, like, made by Sony Studios so they can technically go multi-platform. If that, like, and I think, what was, there was a fucking, uh, they, I think PS4 did that with an indie game. There was an indie game that's, that's, that's like that, that's a timed exclusive for the PS4. And then they'll be free to make other versions, aka the Xbox One and Wii U version. And people didn't give them shit about it, but oh, it's a fucking travesty because they did it with fucking Tomb Raider. It's, and it's all look, and I look at Angry, Angry Joe's video, and I little Angry Joe, you were just, you were salty about that specifically because you originally, because you're a PS4, because you feel like it's a desperate move. But it's not a desperate move. They were doing that when they were in the lead. They were doing that when they were beating the PS3, so it's not really a desperate move. More so, it's just them resorting to old tactics. That worked for them in the past. That would work better if they would just keep the fucking game, Microsoft. Stop. Stop just fucking. This is what you do. You kind of like, you take it away from somebody and you just kind of hold it out in front of them. Say, I'll give this back to you in five minutes. And then you just hold it under your arm like an asshole. And then five minutes goes by and you give them the game. And then So then it looked as, though, as the consumer, we look at you and go, so what was the fuck was the point of you holding it for five minutes? Oh, look, you gotta. And what makes it worse is that you know it's gonna sell better on a Sony platform anyway, because the last Tomb Raider game sold better on the Sony platforms. So. But Crystal Dynamics doesn't give a shit because Crystal Dynamics knows that, well, we'll, we'll still get the same money for porting it to the same consoles as we usually port it to, and then we'll get the extra money from Microsoft to make it exclusive. Because if anyone didn't realize, Tomb Raider was a loss for them. But it was, I guess, it had enough fan. Usually sequels do better than the uh, first game, so they're kind of. I think they're going for an Uncharted 2 kind of effect. It's like Tomb Raider 1 was good as shit. Next Tomb Raider should do even better. It's they're pretty much taking a gamble on that, and plus that they're already getting a decent amount of money from Microsoft anyway. So it's like even 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 it being exclusive, it's like we already got a fuck ton of money from the get go. So any money we make from that. From the other consoles, which you will. Also, the fact that it's on the 360 also just proves my point. They have no faith in next gen. Like, there is no faith in next gen. It's like, oh, we can't just port it to the Xbox One and make people want to buy an Xbox One. It has to go to the 360. So all you motherfuckers who say, oh, this is going to be the next gen lower crop. No, the fuck is not, because it's still going to be made for the 360. You want to watch? Because they still want that, that 360 install base money. Exactly. It's... Uh, it's this whole debacle is insane. It's just kind of like everyone started bitching about this game as if this was something new from, in general, or just new from Microsoft. Neither which is true. It's not new in any fucking way. And then the Bayonetta 2 relation was fucking asinine, which is even more insulting than the Wii U owners because it's like we don't get that many fucking third-party games anyway. And the ones we do get, you start bitching about us not about us having them as exclusives. You motherfuckers got Rayman from us. You got uh, Dead X Human Revolution Director's Cut. You get every... We As of right now, we don't even know we're getting the next... We're probably not even getting the next Assassin's Creed game or the next Call of Duty game. And you motherfuckers will still come at us about, oh, but you guys get Bayonetta 2. Oh, but Bayonetta 2 isn't a system seller. What the fuck are you complaining about? I don't get that shit. I don't get it at all. And it's, it's asinine. It's like... You complain about something Microsoft's been doing now, even though they've been doing it for at least a full generation before this, and you act like it's a new fucking concept to you, like you've never seen them do this before. The fucking stupidity amazes me, man. Microsoft, hold on to a fucking exclusive, please. Make, give me a reason to buy. You keep taking, as I said before, you keep taking shit away 
that would make me, it's like you give me reasons to buy your console and then you take them away. Oh look, it's coming to PC. Hey look, it's coming to PC. Hey look, it's coming to PC. Should I buy, B should I buy an Xbox One? No, everything that I want on the bitch is on PC, so fuck it. Microsoft, keep exclusives in the future because you apparently haven't learned yet. Keep your fucking exclusives. Fans, shut the fuck up. It's not even that big of a deal. This isn't anything new. If you're gonna, why didn't you bitch about it before? If you're gonna, if you're bitching about it now, it's the same practice they've been doing before. It's a timed exclusive, so it's not like you're not gonna get it eventually. And Bayonetta two whiners, are you fucking kidding me? The one, the one of the few games we do get, and we actually are keeping exclusive. And you act like. Nintendo's the golden child, like we fucking stole everything you fucking loved. When you guys weren't even supporting your game enough to get a sequel from it, so... Yeah. What does that say about you? Just saying. I own Bayonetta for the PS3. Just saying. Is it not fair in terms of the whole, you know, not everyone gets to play it? Yeah, but at the same time, the game wouldn't even be made in the first place, so it wouldn't have mattered. Think about it that way. At least you have the opportunity to play it before you weren't going to get to play it, period. So, think about it that way. Anyways, that's just my thoughts. Please tell me yours in the comment section below. Um, I'm also trying to look at the camera more. I realize I don't do that often enough. So, hopefully I was a lot more consistent. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyways, this has been the Insane Game Freak. Life's a game, play to win. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace off.